Watch Hump Day with him shine. Have some fun before we retire. Take a little break from the quagmire. It's Hump Day with him shine. Um. Okay. So. It is surprising to me how many people don't know um, what GLAD stands for. So I tell them that GLAD stands for gay, lesbian, and uh, and then I Google it for them. So GLAD stands for the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. And my next guest is the president and CEO of GLAD. And when she speaks, um, everybody listens because she is so insanely smart and captivating. And okay, here, like, this is just proof of this. There is this picture of me that was taken listening to her speak. This is me listening to Sarah Kate Ellis speak. I look like I've seen the light and now you are all going to see the light. Sarah Kate Ellis. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are happy pride? Happy pride. Yay. Um, thank you for being on my show. Oh, thanks for having me. I guess I can lower this a little. I a lot of light here. I am always so captivated by when you speak. I I actually like I find that you make me understand things that I understand with my heart, but I sometimes need help understanding the kind of like the legislations behind it or those kinds of things that I find complicated, but you make me understand it. And um, anyways, I wanted to ask you how you do that. How are you such a good communicator? Um. Uh, well, I pre that's a beautiful compliment. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me on your show. I'm just delighted to be here. And of course, right after our national treasurer, Laverne Cox. Um, yeah, she's I'm amazing. still a little nervous. Okay. Um, she always makes me nervous too. Okay. Um, you know, I think my job is to let the community and our allies know what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, for or against our community, good or bad. So it's really my job. That's my job is to make sure that we know what's happening and we're fighting back, we're mobilizing, or we're celebrating. This week actually could be a celebration after a really horrible week last week. So, yeah. um, you, you know, know it, it ebbs and flows, and I feel like I need to be able to communicate that to the community and our allies quickly and get the point across of, what this what does this mean what does this mean in real time what does this mean to your life yeah well, that's exactly what it is you really you just articul articulated it perfectly and we do have a huge thing to celebrate this week that um uh for the the supreme court that um made that uh, uh, i'm like all lost because i'm nervous um, but well that was you know the so, so the supreme court ruling is a really fascinating one it literally took us by surprise i have no idea that we any any you know we all sit around and say what do you think how's it going to go whenever i'm anywhere somebody asks me because they think i have an inside line to ruth yeah. bader um which i don't but um and no one knows how they're going to rule. But we can sense, based on culture, based on what's going on in the world, based on the current administration, where the, where the culture is. Mm -hmm. And based on the Trump administration having said that they were opposed to covering LGBTQ people mm -hmm. uh, under sex discrimination. So basically what happened was something kind of beautiful in this week, which was, Title VII, which is, I think, the in 1965 um, Civil Rights Act, says that you cannot discriminate based on sex. And so how do you interpret sex was the conversation. Mm -hmm. And basically, there were three court cases that had made it all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, and one of the women was a trans woman, Amy Stevenson, who passed away in May. Um, and the idea was, can you actually fire someone simply for being LGBTQ? And so 
before Monday, when this when the ruling came out, in all, nearly half the states in the United States, you can be fired simply for being LGBTQ. And we know many people who are fired simply for showing up at work as LGBTQ. So in a lot of states, you can get married on Saturday and show up to work on Monday. You can marry your same-sex partner on Saturday and show up to Monday and get fired. That changed on Monday at the federal level. So this is at the level of marriage equality, if not greater in a way. Marriage equality is exciting and interesting because it's love and everybody loves yeah. love stories. Yeah. But this is about a fundamental American right of yeah. working without discrimination. Yeah. And and but so just the week before though, there was a bad thing that happened that um no. They took the health benefits and rights away from trans people. And what I got, a friend of mine asked this great question, and I wanted to ask it to you, is like, what can we do? Um, like, because, you know, sometimes, like, we'll get one week, uh, trans people have no health care, and the next week, this happens. So what can we do to make sure that going forward in a new administration coming up, that we don't go backwards, that we continue like, is there anything we can do to make sure of that? It, it get people to the polls and make sure they vote on November 3rd. Every, we are pointing so much of our energy against November 3rd at this point because all else really rides on that at this in this stage. There's nothing that we can do right this second. I mean, a few of the organizations are suing the Trump administration. That's years of litigation um, around the, the removal. So basically what happened on Friday, last week was a terrible week actually. Yeah. Two um, trans women of color were found murdered. And on that Friday, uh, the Trump administration removed protections out of the Affordable Health Care Act for the trans community. So basically, the reversal of what happened on Monday happened on Friday. Yeah. If you are trans, a doctor, a medical provider, such as the hospital, and health care insurance can discriminate against you simply for being transgender in this country. Um, and so it really is important to vote. It's important to educate people, especially our allies. I find that mm. our allies are always willing to step up. They just don't know half the time. So yeah. using your platform to educate them is critical. Yeah, which I, that's what I feel like you do. You do that for me um, on Instagram, everything. And I learn, I learn from your Instagram. Um, okay. But I, um, so at the beginning, I was mentioning my kind of, I guess, coming out story-ish. But I feel like coming out is usually like a really long process for people. So I thought on this show, people could do like their coming out story in 30 seconds. <laughs> would you do your coming, like, for example, mine, mine would be like, uh, I like this person. And then I said, uh, then pe people had an opinion on it. And uh, they were like, is Stevie a lesbian? Is Emily bi? Who's Emily? And uh, uh, then I was like, Dan, what am I? And Dan was like, you're Pan. And I was like, I'm Pan. <laughs> that was a beautiful coming out story. Okay. I think mine is, I was in the car with my dad. He asked me if I was gay. I said, yes. He said, oh, you're going to have to tell your mother that. So we went home. I told my mother. She cried. This was in June. Then in December, I asked if I could invite my girlfriend to the holidays. She said, why do you keep bringing this up? And then we didn't talk about it for another year. And now she's a happy grandmother of two of my children, and I'm married. Oh, I love 30 oh. second coming out. <laughs> better than life coming out. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Before oh, before I let you go, I need to give you your quarantine nickname. And your quarantine nickname is, it used to be quarantine, now it's quarantine, is um, the emotion you're feeling right now plus the last thing you ate. I am feeling happy right now, happy mozzarella. Oh, I love happy mozzarella. <laughs> I'm a happy mozzarella. Thank you. I wash my hands of you, Sarah Kate. Thank um, you. Yes, yes. I'm on it.
Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy Pride. Happy Pride.